Hello and welcome back to the Fan Zone here at the Lemure National Dressage Championships. It's the final day. We've had many a great guests and if you want to look back at any of those interviews, they are all available on social media. I'm of course with the brilliant Bobby. Bobby, we're excited about this one, aren't we? We are. I always love talking to the lovely Richard Davison. I know, this could be a very long interview because all of us can talk for Britain. <laughs> but Richard Davison, silver medal winner from the World Champs, fresh back. How are you? Well, I'm actually really well thank you very much and how are you well you're both Good. looking fantastic yeah, well, the first one to ask us well done brownie points <laughs> right there um you are we're here at the nationals first of all um this second year at this venue it's a great venue everyone a lot of the riders saying it has an international feel to it it's a fantastic um date in the calendar well, do you know what? It's, I think it's outstanding. When I drove in on Thursday, you know, I could have been at any big international show. So congratulations to BD and I must say to Summerford because their facilities here, they keep investing in, they keep expanding. And, I, you know, I just think it's absolutely top class. I love the layout. Uh, so congratulations to everybody who's uh, decided on the layout because the layout is very horse friendly yeah uh, you know we know it's difficult because we've had plenty of competitions in the past where you've had to squeeze two dressage arenas side by side in in one main arena and then you get the situation that you know one test finishes halfway through the other and it wrecks the other but yeah. you know they, they've really done a good job of uh, using the space here and, and creating fan, fan, fabulous arenas and we've got our lovely fan zone, which uh, we're very much enjoying. And if you've got any questions for Richard, I am on the old social media as we speak, so send them on in. Um, but we had Gareth Hughes on the sofa yesterday. Anyone can watch that interview back, talking about the World Championships. I mean, wow, you guys did us proud. It was so amazing to have a medal back, but we want to talk about bubbling. I mean, I've met him in the many a time at your yard. He's such a fantastic horse for you. Um, and I know you actually get quite emotional talking about him because I mean, he's he's a family member, isn't he really? Um, you must be so proud of how he took it and how he did out there. Yes, he, well, he is a family member because obviously he was born with us. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we, we had his mother as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm very proud of him. Um, I was very proud of, I must say, I was very proud of the team because yeah. without the team, I wouldn't be having a medal around my neck. So, um, but uh, as to him, yeah, he did quite well. I think everybody knows uh, bubbling finds certain aspects of this challenging. And uh, I, yes, he did actually find that arena quite challenging, which was a bit of a surprise, actually, because, you know, I've done all these World Cup shows with him as part of his progression, really, trying to help him come to terms with very scary things. And they are much more difficult, generally, for, the, for a type of horse like Bubbling, an indoor, big indoor World Cup show, because everything is closer and noisier for the horses. So I rather thought, you know, with a lovely big wide outdoor arena and the stands, you know, a long way apart, that he, you know, this was going to be easy for him. But it wasn't. <laughs> so let's go to the very, very beginning of him. So when did you know that he was going to be something special? Oh, well, that's a very good question, Bobby. Um, I don't think with any of the horses that we've produced over the years, you know, we know for sure. Let's put it like this. There's a lot of hope that goes in more than knowledge. Um, so many times we've hoped that horses are going to, you know, make international horses or be very comfortable at the Grand Prix level. And sometimes we've been right and sometimes, you know, it hasn't worked out. And I, you know, I, I, I've been very lucky to, you know, to, to, to have done this for a very long period of time. And I know I'm lucky in that respect. But the one thing that we've always really done, whether our dressage horses or show jumpers for that matter, is let them tell us the level that they are comfortable at. Because to be quite honest, uh, that is what will determine the success of for the horse or the rider more than the rider's ambition and obviously when we're young and we're starting out we've all got our own personal human uh, goals but the quickest way is actually to slightly put those aside because there are many years for us humans but the horse doesn't have so many years so you, you let the horse determine that and um, 
with bubbling, we could see that he could do all the Grand Prix movements quite effortlessly um, in training quite early on. Well, I, I think you witnessed him quite early on in his training. But that doesn't mean that they're going to deliver, you know, at an international level time and time again. And you really, really don't know until you get into that Grand Prix level and you get going on the circuit. And that's exactly the case with him. And, you know, you're saying that you've got a lot of experience um, and everything like that. And yes, you do. But I think you learned a lot with bubbling as well, didn't you? Because he wasn't, you've already mentioned, didn't find sort of atmospheres easy. So how did you get him through all of that? What was the journey between the two of you to get the confidence with him? Well, to be honest, you know, what I, I think you learn with every horse that you ride or you train and it doesn't matter what level. I think that's probably why we, we all do it. And that's why I still do it. So with him, you know, he's got a highly elevated flight instinct. Um, so, you know, flags and well, actually anything. <laughs> anything. Uh, uh, I mean, yesterday, you know, he was terrified of, I think there were two sparrows in our indoor school and they were really not really making too much of a noise, but he thought they were quite terrifying. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I've kind of, I'm a bit obsessive about understanding how things work. And um, so I delved into understanding what triggers the flight instinct. And I for, hope you're not going to ask me to explain this because we no, could be here for a okay. long time. I was going to jump. But I can do if you want to know about neurotransmitters. But uh, There it is. Woof. <laughs> I think I've yeah. with Richard many a time. I know there's a tangent here. He could go a dark He's hole. Like, where's those degrees yeah. to catch up? Don't worry. I'm looking for the glazed eyes now. <laughs> it's already happening. Oh, I'm stopping. I'm stopping on it's neurotransmitters. Panic. And then yeah. you asked me, uh, so what was I saying? <laughs> oh, no. Um, but obviously, a lot of people that watch this as well um, admire your journey with bubbling as well because they have some sharper horses what piece of advice would you give them if you think if they find their horse a little bit sharp or not so easy in the arena well the, the first and that's really interesting because actually i was just talking uh, you know on the radio nationals about the fact that breeding sport horses these days you know the selection of stallions and mares is all about their offspring and the success of the offspring at top sport and that determines the selection but what it doesn't do is all is necessarily tell you how easy those horses are to train at home or for less professional riders which have less uh, facilities you know maybe not even an indoor school you have an outdoor school on top of a windy hill that's quite challenging to train those horses in that environment so Going forward, as that breeding has changed, I think we've all got to learn more about what are the triggers for these horses with sharp temperaments, quick responsive temperaments. And the, the, the first thing I'd say is, you know, stop addressing it in human terms. So, you know, oh, he dropped me, he dropped behind my leg or he resisted. Uh, you know, I don't use that word at all. So if you look through the horse's eyes, and a horse's brain is different to ours, uh, and it's still wired uh, in terms of survival and what might attack him. And, and although we know it's just a flag, these flags here are attached to flagpoles, they're not going to drop off and scare the horse. We know that. We know what they're made of and we know what it's like. A horse doesn't know that. It doesn't even see the same colours of ours. It doesn't even get it. So look through a horse's eyes and understand, um, make a little bit of effort as to how a horse's brain compared to a human brain works. And don't mix the two up <laughs> because you will be very frustrated. I mean, uh, you, you don't have to compete at a place like this. Everybody knows that experience about the horse spooking at the muck bucket or in the same corner or the ghost or the ghost or, <laughs> or the, the sparrows or the sparrows yeah. and and so uh, understand we know it's just a muck bucket horse doesn't get that at all and that's actually a sign of intelligence and survival of a horse it's not being stupid uh, it's actually how that line has uh, avoided uh, you know the lion jumping on the back and dragging it down and killing it so it's actually a highly intelligent uh, thing to do if i was a horse i would do that i hope <laughs> maybe i'm flattering myself there but anyway 
Um, and Richard, just listening to you there, I absolutely love it. And that's why I've loved training with you for such a long time. And I think your whole way of training is very unique because you try and simplify everything. Like you're explaining there, you know, pressure and release. This leg does that job. And why do you think it's so important to ride the horses in that way? Well, because it, first of all, it's the most effective way. Uh, it, it really is. That's why I've... That's kind of like why I've refined it uh, like that. So it works and it works the quickest and because it works for a horse. And I'll just leave it like that. But you're, you're very kind to say I've simplified it. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. For some people like the same old, same old, same old and it's simple for them. I don't think that's right. And I, I you know, obviously we're all very rightly interested in welfare of the horse and so we should be but we in order to understand mental welfare of a horse you have to make a bit of effort to understand as i said how a horse's brain functions the sort of things a horse might feel familiar with and okay with and the sort of things that he might not be uh, familiar with and so i i think um some of our conventional training is uh, is really good and it's amazing how the old guys that invented this the old masters got it right scientifically but there's other things that need to change and i've you know i think sl change is slow coming but it's coming and i'm now talking about it change in terms of methods and understanding of horse riding and training it is fascinating. And your understanding of a horse goes to a whole different level. And I think, I know this is going to sound really random, but listening to you there about that, horses see things so differently. When I had kids, my husband was like, I can't believe how patient. You're the most impatient person in the world. But with our baby, you're so patient. I'm like, yeah, because I think of it like a horse. It's, that sounds, go with me with this. But they've never been dressed before. So when you're dressing them and they scream, it's the first time they've ever worn clothes or the first time they've ever held a bottle. Do you know what I mean? And it's the same with horses. They, If you can be patient and realize this is something they don't understand. Actually, I found that in my life, it made me a lot more patient as well with other things and with training dogs. So it's just, I think people do, they're so quick to anthropomorphize horses, whereas actually we need to treat them completely differently and be patient. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I wish, I, respect to you, Jenny, there, because I need to transfer my horse understanding skills to human beings. You've obviously, <laughs> you're way ahead of me on that. Only but, when, until they started talking, and then when they could understand me, the patience went out of the window. Yeah, <laughs> well, I got nervous when you talk about kids screaming, you know. I could literally see you I'm out of the door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we do have to um, talk about now, the, obviously, the World Championships and um, bubbling and, um, and the team. And, I mean, you were saying... You you rode um, Bubbling's mother on a championships 20 years ago and with Lottie Fry's yeah. mum. And I mean, it's come full circle. Sadly, Lottie's mum, Laura, is no longer with us. Um, but that, I mean, you've been on the teams for a very, very long time. I'm sorry. Um, but how emotional was it for you having a being on a team with Lottie, having been on with her mum so long ago and also seeing her just blossom and do so well and perform? Was that quite emotional for you? Um, hmm. Yes, is, is the answer <laughs> to that. Um, I, you know, I suppose uh, I much prefer to talk about horses now because you've really got me on the back foot here now on the emotion front. You know, the, th the thing is about um, getting older, you've got a lot of memories. And uh, certainly I've got lovely memories of Dottie's mum. I call you emotional. Sorry, Richard. Yes, no, I'm, yeah, you have. And uh, you actually caught me on the hop here. So, you know, yeah, it's, um, that is very special. Yeah. You know, that, that's a very special memory for me. Um, look, can we talk about horse training? <laughs> <laughs> but it's special for us as well because we, we see you guys on the TV at these championships. We don't get to see Lottie over here. Um, so knowing that relationship and knowing and seeing her, I mean, it's so magical for us to know the British dressage is going to continue in these safe hands with these young riders. But at the same time, knowing she was going to a championship with you and like, because that's a massive deal to put on her shoulders, knowing she's on this horse and, and she's got to go and perform. But actually, that's one thing about British dressage and the team element of it is knowing that she's got a stalwart like you on the team to, to be there and that team element to it. 
Well, I, you know, but don't, that's very kind of you to say that. I'm, I'm sure, uh, I don't know that, that that really made much difference to Lottie. She's an incredibly cool rider. I mean, she's just incredible. And a lovely, lovely girl. I mean, I, I'm, she's coming here later today and I hope you're going to... We have, we've got her. Very excited. Because, you know, obviously because she lives in Holland, that there are a lot of people that don't know her and don't see her and don't hear her enough. But I can just tell you, she's she's just the dream personality and it's 100% genuine and she's a real hard worker. Um, I mean, as, as, as everybody knows, she's just an extremely talented rider um, and obviously has a great support crew around her so i i don't think it made any difference me being there um made a difference to us uh, <laughs> but actually funnily enough you know it is something that i'm i'm looking now to see whether the lottery comes around the corner the the thing uh, about laura her, her late mother and and you know me being together with with her we don't talk about that actually because i i know that it uh, you know, obviously upsets uh, lottie so it's i've been on nations cup teams with her and i you know after the first time i decided we're gonna not have that we're gonna not gonna mention that subject so um it's something that i probably carry around and we really don't talk about it until until it's over and done with but uh, it is nice to have that memory I was just about to say, in 1993, I think it was, that you and Laura Fry were on a team together and won the first medal for Great Britain, didn't you? Well, I, I, I don't know the <laughs> And year. I know this fact, because well Winnie done. gave it to me, so I know we're safe. Okay, and all right. he's never wrong when it comes to Because I fact. don't do years and ages, and I don't know how old bubbling is, which I get asked lots of time. <laughs> uh, so you're well done, well done. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's right. And there was a, you know, that, was, that was great, great to, to do that. I think it's... I think, um, what is wonderful as well obviously we've seen you over the years and we've seen lottie now coming through but um what it means to you obviously the memories and getting emotional but it, it's i mean we love our teams and we love that you've got medals for us and it is emotional like watching it i mean when i watched lottie's test i was a mess i was an absolute mess but this is a sport because people are so passionate about it because it's not just humans but it's the horses and it's the love of the horse so seeing you get emotional and seeing how much it means to you guys and and i mean when we watched Lottie's test, I mean, it was one of those wow, total ass Vallegro moments, wasn't it? It was unbelievable, that freestyle. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned total ass because, you know, I think Vallegro, total ass and Glamourdale, you know, they really are in a class of their own. And, you know, it, we're, we're all lucky enough to, to witness them and, and enjoy them and be thrilled at them. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Glamourdale is is an amazing horse. Lottie rides him absolutely, you know, to perfection. Um, and Anna Van Els tells me the next one coming along is... It's just on the seven-year-old. Uh, it's just, like, terrifying, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you when we watch The Worlds, and, you know, I wasn't there, I got to watch it on TV, but the stand of horses now are just incredible. It must have been amazing being there watching it all. Yeah, it was a very interesting championships, actually, because, um, you know, nothing was given who was going to win the gold and all the rest of it. Um, you know, there were some of the world's most experienced riders on green horses. Uh, there were some really good horses with up and coming riders. There were a lot of unknowns. And I, th I think, you know, everybody felt that. And that was really refreshing. Um, and, the, you know, the standard was great. Most of them worked. Some of them didn't work. You know, you always get the ones that blow up and, you know, it doesn't go to plan and you feel sorry for, for those riders. But it was, it was a really interesting uh, championships from a dressage horse rider potential, you know, going forward. And um, it was exciting to the end, actually. Really? Um, and you've been on so many teams. Um, and many Olympics. What was so special about this world? What was there a real special memory? Obviously, silver medal, but the whole team, the whole experience. What was so special about it? Well, the special thing was I didn't expect to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I have been lucky to to do lots of championships, but you know, I honestly didn't think my I thought my championships days were over a long time ago. So that was number one, and um, there was no pressure on on me really. So it's lovely to go to a championships where you've got absolutely no pressure. You know, just need my 
teammates to just go and do their stuff and then I can collect the booty afterwards. Um, so it was really relaxing and it was lovely to be there. You know, Jill these days doesn't come to a lot of, of the international shows with me. So it was nice that she came. She loved it that there was no pressure on us. <laughs> Love Jill. Love uh, so, you know, and, and all the other things we've already talked about, that there was uh, nice to actually see these uh, new horse rider combinations coming along and developing. And, it, and I have to say, you know, Full Marks, you know, I've already said this is a fantastic layout for the, for the horses and the riders here. But the or, organisation uh, in Herning from the Danes was absolutely superb not just horse friendly rider friendly fantastic for the grooms the facilities the grooms really i won't say for the first time but f for me visually the facilities for them you know showed the acknowledgement that that they are rightly so getting important. absolutely at the top and uh, at the top of the priority list and so it wasn't a question that you know the riders and the owners were treated lavishly and you know the grooms got fed in a turn around the back it wasn't that at all they were absolutely you know center stage which they should be and um before you go richard um i, I want to know your secret you are looking very trim just to go off on a different tangent there'll be people what like you are looking amazing what is going on you're looking <laughs> looking svelte you really don't want to ask that question because otherwise it's a bit like the neurotransmitters i might give you the uh, the, the rundown on mitochondria which is my latest thing that i'm been studying um yeah well actually you know how what how this started because um i your horse live yes i don't know whether i ever fessed up to you on that one but i interviewed you at your horse live on a stage very similar to yeah. this yeah so I, what, I, what i never told you is when i was at your horse live uh i'd been in bed for two days beforehand with an infection and joe our youngest son you know we were doing this joint demonstration together and he kept messaging me saying, because if I, if I wasn't there, he'd have to do it on his own. So he kept saying, Dad, you are going to be OK, aren't you? You know, you will be OK. Will you be able to do it? I, yeah. So for my temperature up here, you know, I was like, yeah, don't worry, Joe. It, it will be fine. We'll get there. I'll, I will be there and I will be on a horse and I will do yeah. the talking and all the rest of it. So but actually, the truth is, I still had a raging temperature. So. I felt terrible and I was going back to the horse box and uh, anyway, my doctor friend said, listen, call in on, on the way home. So I, d I didn't even feel like changing out my britches and boots, so I went to the surgery like that. And uh, in, in the process of all of this, they said, oh, you know, you haven't eaten anything, you're in ketosis. So all I knew was, actually, that's quite good, isn't it? But getting into ketosis is quite difficult, but I'd already got there. So I thought, well, I better stay in, stay in ketosis like that. So I won't say I've been in ketosis since last November, but that is, that is basically the ketogenic diet is why I'm, wow. with, with a twist, with a yeah. twist. And so you're now keeping up the, the svelte and... Well, it's not about weight, which I yeah. did need to lose. It's about health. And yeah. it's about, you know, st stopping a lot of these diseases and illnesses which actually can affect people at, at any age yeah and it's understanding how we can avoid that happening so you're like a health guru now another thing for you to research. another so thing to, to you know look up. yeah yeah i'm not mostly my colleagues my friends don't riders you know they don't ask me to talk about this because they know that this is going to be bad news what i'm going to say oh no i love it so, but <laughs> I, I i don't i think um i think we maybe need to make a whole different show on it richard's health plan and, well it'll only yeah. be us three there because yeah. everyone else will do a runner because it's not what you want to hear well, you look incredible. Um, thank you so much for coming on to the Fan Zone. It's so lovely to talk to you. I know that later on you're going to be in the parade, um, in the cars later. But thank you. Give my love to Jill and Joe and the family and everybody and Bubbling, of course, and give him a big hug from me. And Tom, who's over in Florida. Don't give my love to him. He's probably enjoying <laughs> the weather. It up. I know. Ridiculous. Um, but it's so lovely to see you. And thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Lovely to see you too. And all your readers, listeners, viewers and everybody else. How modern? How modern was I that? Look at, look at nailing it. <laughs>